Good day, folks. Welcome back to the channel. Looking for like a silver bar. I need it today. Anything could happen from now until tomorrow. Yeah, this no, ain't real. That's that's not. Yeah, right. that was silver for a long time. Uh, so I've been waiting guess, for this day coming up. What day is coming up? Apocalypse. When the apocalypse comes, how is because the, the currency is going to be gone? How's it going to go? You can't spend. It's all going to be precious metal. That, I, that I, is, I have to prepare sir. for this day. It's coming. Stop playing games with me. Go get me the real silver. Good day, folks. Today we will show you Meathead's moments on Hardcore Pawn. I need to pay my court fees, crash my car, well, her car. You just need to get as much as you can. It's your damn business. 900 bucks. That's ridiculous. Tell me what it is. No, no, tell me what to do. Stop talking. Just Dude, stop talking. seriously, why are you just such an ass? No, you need to. No, I don't no. need to. You're so my store. It is my property. business. This it's is not my your property. property. Do She's I tell your property person. what to do? Yes, I'm, I'm just... telling you what to do. Don't be an ass. Okay. Girl. Silver bars. In the world of Hardcore Pawn, a self-proclaimed meathead customer entered with a specific request to purchase seven ounce silver bars. However, Seth has no such bars in stock. Looking for like a silver bar? About seven. I can order it for you because I usually don't have them on hand. Uh, no, so. no, I need it today. Anything could happen from now until tomorrow. That's what you wanted? Yeah, this no ain't real. That's, that's not yeah, real? Yeah, can you go, yeah. What would it look like if it were real? Um, more shinier. More shiny? Yeah. The customer insisted on an immediate purchase due to his fear of unexpected events. Seth apologized and explained that genuine silver would have a shinier appearance and wouldn't tarnish. That was silver for a long time, so uh, I've been waiting guess, for this day coming up. What day is coming up? Apocalypse. When the apocalypse comes, how is Because the, the currency is going to be gone. How's it going to go? You can't spend it. It's all going to be precious metal. There's no way that you're going to come to me with this fake-ass silver. It's this not is, fake, sir. This is taking care sir, of my family. Sir. Give me real silver. I'm really trying to be as civil as I possibly can with You're you. You're gonna embarrass yourself here. The customer, obsessed with an upcoming event called the Apocalypse, believed that precious metals like silver would retain their value. He demanded authentic silver from Seth, growing increasingly angry and accusing him of selling fakes. I, I, I have to prepare sir. for this day. It's coming. Stop playing games with me. Go get me the real silver. You know what? He's right. The end is here. Get his ass out of here. The no. Apocalypse is, is coming, man. And is now. Have a nice day. Y'all better be ready for the Better prepare, get your silver! Finally, Seth had no choice but to ask the frustrated customer to leave, asserting that the imminent apocalypse was undeniable. No refund. In this intense confrontation, a customer approached Les seeking a $25 refund for a faulty item. Despite Les's request for a receipt as proof of purchase, Check this out, man. I can turn around and pay for that. What's up with that? 25 bucks, man. Come on, come on. You gonna talk to me? Orderly, I'm speaking English, I say. You get it? Sign language? What's up? You don't have to yell at me. Man, we're looking at that dope. Stop yelling. What's about to make me jump over this counter in a minute? Now, if you want to be treated like a gentleman, act like one. The customer grew increasingly irate and stubbornly refused to provide it. Tensions escalated as the customer threatened to leap over the counter and demanded a refund without the receipt. Show me the receipt. I ain't got no receipt, man. How can I give you another game if you don't Because I receipt? bought it from here, man. You bring me the receipt. What, am I supposed to carry it with me? Give me my money back now. That's gonna mess up my system, and then you're gonna be buying me a new system and a game. Follow me. Here. Les upholding proper procedures stood firm and guided him towards the refund counter. However, due to the customer's disrespectful attitude, he was swiftly escorted out of the store by security. I don't know if he really bought it from us, but because he was so irate, he had to go. We're gonna go right here to the refund. No, I ain't going over there. I got Get out of me, man. You going. Man, you ready? Man, I ain't going you ready? Nowhere, man. Let's go. Man, you going. You going. I ain't but going nowhere. Have a nice day. Get the game. Thank you. Merry Christmas. This encounter emphasized the significance of respectful behavior and highlighted the consequences of a negative attitude, resulting in no refund for the troublesome meathead. Fake Diamond. In this episode, a customer entered the store complaining about a pair of diamond earrings. He showed Ashley the earrings, revealing that his ear had turned green due to the fake diamond. Ashley was appalled by the situation. I paid $500 for this earring. Look what this done did to my ear. <laughs> Is that a real diamond? And it's a fake diamond with a fake metal. It's not the correct earring for the receipt. I got my lawyer with me. Show me your card. I don't have a card with me. What law from do you report? It's not important. Upon inspecting the earrings, she confirmed that they were indeed fake. The customer demanded a refund, but Ashley was aware that the earrings didn't belong to their store. The earring does not match the description. So you said now I just brought an earring in? Come on. This is your receipt. This is your store. I want my money back. Would you like to meet my attorney? 
I want my money. You better not put his hand on me. Then you better turn around with your two legs and walk out yourself. The customer threatened to sue with the assistance of a lawyer, but when asked for proof, he refused to provide any information. Frustrated, the customer began shouting and displaying anger. I'm not walking nowhere. Wanna bet? Walk your butt out that door. Now! No! Get you don't out. just tell me what to do! Get out! We didn't make his ear green. It's just a scam. Oh, evil woman. Recognizing the disturbance they were causing, Ashley called security to escort them out of the store. Video games. A woman entered the store wanting to pawn her boyfriend's game, but he was no longer with her. Les questioned if she had permission to keep the game as it belonged to her ex-boyfriend. I wanted to pawn my ex-boyfriend's game. His game or your game? This is his game. It's his game. You're not with him any longer? No. Did he give you permission to keep it? He left it at my house, so that's the only permission I need. If it belonged to him, I can't take it. The woman argued that she could do what she wanted with it, but Les explained that taking a potentially stolen item would jeopardize the store. Undeterred, she insisted on pawning the games, disregarding the legal implications. And what if he comes back to your house, knocks on the door and says, where's my unit? Tell him it's that America pawning jewelers. You can give me something for it. I could, if it was yours. Well, I'm not going nowhere. I wouldn't jeopardize the store. I wouldn't jeopardize us. I'm not allowed to take it. It's not stolen. He left it in my house. But I can't do anything for you. I'm terribly sorry. I'm you ain't sorry, sorry about Les firmly stood his ground, emphasizing the store's commitment to upholding the law and avoiding any involvement with stolen items. You could go to jail. I'm not going to mother jail. No, I'm not saying that you're going to go to jail, but I'm just saying that's the option that he could take. Deuces! That's all right. Have a nice day. Your mama. Despite her persistence, the woman eventually realized she couldn't bend the rules and left the store frustrated. Guy disrespects girlfriend. A confrontational guy entered the store seeking money to pay court fees after crashing his girlfriend's car while driving under the influence. He disrespected his girlfriend in front of everyone, displaying arrogant behavior. I need to pay my court fees, crash my car, well, her car. You just need to get as much as you can. It's not your damn business. I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. What's the goal? That's 18 care, right? 18 care. Okay. 900 bucks. That's ridiculous. Well, it's not ridiculous. That's what I can offer. Tell me what it is. I mean, tell me what to do. Stop talking. This is man, man talking right now completely disrespects her in front of everybody at the store. I don't even want to do business with this guy because he's such an ass. Seth hesitated to do business with such a disrespectful person, but offered $900 for the rings. The guy rudely protested the amount, disregarding Seth's authority on store property. Stop talking. Just Dude, stop seriously, talking. Seriously, why are you Just such stop. an ass? No, you need No, I don't no. need to. You're so my store. It is my, my property. business. This it's is not my your property. property. Do She's I tell your, own your property person. what to do? You're on my property, so I can tell you what to do. I'm, I'm telling you what to do. Don't be an ass okay. your girl. Who do you think you are? You're not gonna talk to me like that. This is five thousand dollars for trial. That's just paper. That's just paper. Why don't you shut the up? You shut the. Make me get out. Who the are you? Seth firmly insisted on respectful conduct, but the individual's disrespectful behavior persisted, revealing his true character. In the end, Seth made the decision to kick him out of the store. Who the are you? This is bull. This. This. Hopefully one day she'll wise up, move on, and realize that this guy's complete tool. Trying to be a good boyfriend, right? And she started talking for no apparent reason, ruined my chances to get her car fixed that I crashed. This encounter highlighted the challenges of dealing with disrespectful customers and emphasized the importance of maintaining professionalism in difficult situations. Empty liquor bottle. In a dramatic episode, tensions flared as a self proclaimed meathead attempted to pawn an empty liquor bottle for a whopping $800, convinced that its upscale design held significant value. However, Les swiftly corrected her, explaining that without the liquor inside, its worth amounted to a mere $100. High-end bottle of liquor. The problem was the liquor was gone. Ma'am, I can't use it. I'm terribly yeah, sorry. Yeah, but don't belittle nobody and don't belittle what they have. So you want to take a person down when they're in need? That's what you're saying? They're you have no respect. When you want to take a person when they down and say, I give you $100. They're 1200 well, that's more than $100. Taking the opportunity to impart a valuable lesson, Les reminded her not to prioritize material possessions, emphasizing their insignificance in the greater scheme of things. This is a crystal bottle. It lasts. Damn, I didn't belittle you. I'll give you a hundred dollars. It's not worth more than a hundred bucks. They're eight hundred dollars filled with liquor. You going to die? This little piece of here ain't gonna mean nothing. You can't take none of it with you, baby. I know that. Money ain't gonna feed you or heal you. You treat people like. 
don't you ever walk up to my dad. Hey, baby, don't point your fingers at me. Belittle him and talk about his store. Unfortunately, the woman's disrespectful behavior and derogatory comments toward Les escalated the situation, prompting him to deliver a stern response and ultimately ban her from the store. And talk about his health and talk about his life after this. Don't you dare ever come in here again. I don't care you're in my dad's store and don't you ever think about coming in here again. Turn your ass around with your alcohol breath and walk your fat ass out the door now. Respecting others and valuing dignity should outweigh materialistic pursuits, regardless of status or occupation. Snake juice. In a captivating episode, a pair of enthusiastic meatheads swagger into Les's shop, brandishing a tantalizing bottle of Vietnamese snake wine. The initial asking price for this exotic elixir, complete with a scorpion and cobra, is a staggering $200. Vietnamese snake wine. Take a shot of this, you'll, you'll last for weeks. Wow, that's right. weeks. It has a scorpion and a cobra, and that's really where the healing power comes from. This can accomplish miracles. So how much did you want for this? Like 200 bucks. So I did some investigation. I found out about this. His size matters. My stake's way oh, bigger wow. than yours. However, Les Ever the Savvy Negotiator counters with a cheeky offer of a mere $10. Unsurprisingly, the meathead scoff at the proposal after engaging in a lively round of bargaining. How much you really take for this thing? I'm thinking 100 bucks. How about 10? 10? No, no way. I think 50. 10. I'll tell you what. You both take a swig, I'll pay you 30. Deal? <laughs> How are you yeah. gonna walk away? 40 bucks. You were gonna sell it for 30. I'm sorry. No. You're scared of this? Drink it. Why use a chicken? A settlement is reached at $40. Despite doubts surrounding the drink's actual efficacy, the sellers reluctantly accept Les's offer, bravely taking a shot. Do you think it's actually safe? And if they don't die, I know I can sell it. 50 bucks. It smells good. Lovely. All right. Okay, ready. Oh, wow. Down the hatch. Here we go. Oh, man. I really want to puke, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> However, Les's interest in more snake wine reflects people's readiness for extreme health solutions, including consuming snake-infused potions. Remote thief. In this episode, a woman named Barbara and her nephew Leon visited the store seeking a remote for a TV they had previously pawned. Barbara explained that Leon had repurchased the TV, but discovered it lacked a remote. How are you? Good, I'm Seth. I'm Barbara. Nice to meet you. And this is my nephew, nice Leon. Leon. Hey, Leon, nice to meet you. We, and my nephew had pawned his TV in, uh -huh. came back to get it. It was already being sold. We had to rebuy the TV. We realized that it wasn't a remote. You ever see that you, where you purchased it? Only thing uh, I have is the barcode. Barbara presented the TV's barcode as proof of ownership, requesting a replacement remote. However, Seth informed them that if the TV was pawned without a remote, he wouldn't have one to provide. That's the barcode for the TV. Right. No, I pawned the TV in with right. the remote control. He bought it without the remote control. Y'all don't even sell TVs without remotes. Sure I do. Can sell you a universal remote no, if you no, like. No, 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 no. He pawned the no. TV, it was a remote toy. You wanna buy one? So you give my nephew his remote right now. Barbara argued against the store selling TVs with our remotes, while Seth suggested buying a universal remote instead. Frustrated, Barbara demanded her nephew's remote back immediately. The remote. It's you back there somewhere. No, back it's not there. Auntie, Auntie, we're going to get your remote. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Your remote stealer! I mean, your remote thief! I don't think he heard you. Disappointed in questioning the store's practices, they left, showcasing the clash of expectations and dissatisfaction with the world of Hardcore Pond. This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching it. Make sure to comment, hit that like, and subscribe button. Hit the notification bell for more videos like this. Share this video with your family and friends. See you soon.